Have you ever stopped to consider how a pesticide poisoning may occur on your farm? The possibility of a poisoning happening may seem next to impossible, however the impossible can happen. These incidents may not lead to a poisoning, but they could, and you should know what to do. This program reviews basic first aid techniques you can follow at home in case a pesticide poisoning occurs on your farm. This information does not replace a first aid course. For your own safety and the welfare of your family, consider taking a first aid course offered in your area. When an accident happens with pesticides, be prepared to act quickly and calmly. Don't hesitate. Take charge of the situation. Your quick actions may prevent additional exposure and minimize injury. Keep in mind that first aid is just that. It's the initial effort to help while medical attention is on the way. There are some basic first aid steps to follow for each type of poisoning. These are steps you can take to help yourself or someone else. Remember, if you are helping someone else, protect yourself from becoming poisoned. This may mean putting on protective clothing and equipment before entering a contaminated area or washing thoroughly after giving first aid. Let's review these first aid steps. If a pesticide contacts the skin, as it did in this particular incident, would you know what to do? When a pesticide contacts the skin, first, stop the exposure, remove the contaminated clothing, then drench the skin with water. Anybody who's working with pesticides should have uh, water and, and perhaps even some soap with them in case they, something happens and they get accidentally exposed to pesticides. But the rule is you get the pesticide away from the person. So if it's on the skin, then that pesticide has to be thoroughly removed because it's being absorbed as long as there's any of it left on the skin. And this includes the face. So if you've got a spray in the face, um, wipe the lips, rinse out the mouth, spit out the water, um, wash your face very well, hair under the fingernails, as long as there's any particle of that liquid or powder left in your eyes, in your hair, in your clothing, it's being absorbed. And you have to get it away from the patient. When somebody has swallowed an, an insecticide or any kind of a pesticide, we used to advocate vomiting as a first aid measure, and now we don't do that anymore. And basically this is because, um, unless it's done properly, it's ineffective, but also because you get sudden onset of symptoms. Uh, there's a lot of different pesticides out there, and so we just don't recommend it. What we do recommend is that um, we, you wash off, if it's just swallowed, or usually um, in an occupational uh, setting, this is something that's happened because the face has been sprayed, not because somebody has actually deliberately drunk something. But whatever the case, you wash off the face, clean off the mouth, take a, um, a sip of something to clear out the path, and then get yourself to uh, a phone where you can phone and find out where to go, what to do, uh, whether you need an ambulance, whether you need so, uh, to, what kind of uh, first aid or how quickly that particular poison requires treatment. Never induce vomiting when the person is in a coma, unconscious, or in convulsions, even if the label tells you to do so. Do not induce vomiting if the person has swallowed a petroleum product or a corrosive product. If a pesticide is swallowed, get the person to medical attention as soon as possible. After carrying out the first aid steps for any of these poisonings, it's time to get medical help. What we need to know is the name of the product. This is very important because there are different pesticides and there's different categories and they, they act in different ways. Some of them are actually slow to be absorbed and others are, are rather rapid and knowing if the patient has any symptoms yet so the duration of how long the person was exposed 
what the name of the product was, how much of the product they were exposed to, if these things are known, and whether or not they're having any symptoms, and also how much they weigh. These are, these are things that, that we need to know. I mean, if you don't have that information, that's fine, but we'll give them the generic first aid. But uh, as much information as we can have uh, would be helpful in determining how quickly that person needs to go to hospital. Collecting the facts won't take long, and you will know most of the necessary information after carrying out the first aid procedures. If all four facts cannot be determined, don't waste time. Call for help, give whatever information you have to the ambulance personnel or the Poison Information Center professionals. These four basic facts are important, so let's look at them in more detail. Identify the product. Collect the container, label, leftover pesticide, or even vomit which may be used to identify the poison. A complete label provides immediate identification. The pest control products act registration number alone will completely identify the product to the poison information center. The guarantee gives the active ingredient of the product, the part of the product most likely to cause poisoning. The label also gives you first aid directions and your doctor toxicological information. The doctor can get further information from the manufacturer. The name and address of the company is also found on the label. Determine the amount taken. Be prepared to estimate how much of the pesticide may have been taken. When a pesticide spills on your arm, you can judge the amount spilled. When you breathe in pesticides, it is difficult to know exactly how much was inhaled. Try to judge the quantity as best as you can, as this will help to determine the severity of the accident. Determine the route of entry. The route of entry can be through the mouth, skin, or lungs. The first aid you give will depend on how the pesticide entered the body. It is quite obvious that this person has had pesticide contact his arm, and the possibility of skin absorption exists. In other cases, the route of entry may not be so obvious, and sometimes the pesticide will have entered the body in all three ways. Finally, determine the time period. This person was only exposed to the pesticide for a short time. Sometimes the exposure may be a few hours or even days. It may not be obvious that the symptoms are the result of a pesticide poisoning. The symptoms are like the symptoms of asthma, food poisoning, and the flu. Symptoms can be headache, dizziness, nausea, perspiration, blurred vision, cramps, vomiting, and fever. With this information, you will be prepared to answer the questions ambulance personnel or the Poison Information Center professionals will have. Give them the information and follow their instructions. Keep emergency telephone numbers close at hand. The Poison Information Center number is listed on the very first page of the telephone book. Advice is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The only thing I can say about pesticide poisoning is that some of them are absorbed through the skin uh, at varying rates and just because somebody doesn't feel symptomatic at the time it doesn't mean that you don't need to be thoroughly decontaminated because a lot of people are have sort of a sub-acute exposure and they're feeling off, they're feeling malaise, they're feeling fatigued, they're feeling nauseated for months and not recognizing that they actually are poisoned. People who work regularly with pesticides need to be monitored. They need to have their health monitored and they need to be scrupulous about decontamination. The other thing I'd like to mention is that some particles of clothing, articles of clothing, leather for example, absorb pesticides and these uh, you should be careful about what you're wearing when you're working with pesticides because you could be poisoning yourself.
The best defense against a pesticide poisoning is to prevent one from occurring. Handle pesticides properly by following label directions and use common sense. Be prepared for the possibility of pesticide poisoning. Here are a few suggestions. Become familiar with the pesticide products you are using by reading the label. Be alert for signs and symptoms of overexposure. Make it a habit to tell someone what pesticide you are using and where the label is. Better yet, have a binder or file of the pesticide labels you use near the telephone for quick reference. Always have clean water close by when working with pesticides. Post emergency telephone numbers near the telephone. Most importantly, take a first aid course. Knowing what to do in the event of a poisoning could make all the difference.